All right, guys, welcome back to the garage. Tuesday, the 22nd of February, and we're just going to uh, do a few small projects out here tonight in the garage. And the first thing I thought I would take a look at are the actual windscreen wipers. Now, Doc had sent in his uh, parts shipment. He'd sent some new chrome arms and blades that we have here, and he also sent some new just black blades. And uh, we were a little bit indecisive uh, if we wanted to go with the chrome or just stick with the black. But now that I'm out here, and actually originally I said, well, let's just stick with the black, but now that I'm out here and having a look at this, as you can see, the uh, surround around the windscreen is chrome, and the cappings on the back of the mirrors are chrome. So I think that uh, those chrome wipers that actually might accent those pieces. So I think what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and we'll fit those, and we'll see what those look like. And it's pretty easy on this Alpha. There's just a couple of nuts to undo to be able to get the uh, arms off. So I think what we'll do is we'll fit those, we'll take a little video, and then we'll let Doc decide in the end whether he wants to stick with the black or go with the chrome. All right, we have a bit of an issue already. You can see here that this shaft has a spline on it. Well, the new chrome arms are not splined, and that's a problem right off the bat. So here are the splines in the old wiper arm. You can see them there. And the other problem is, you can see how the chrome arm has a pocket, sort of a deep pocket in the top. Well, this one does not. That's actually flat. I don't know if I can show you that. That's flat on top. The problem being that when I go to apply the nut back to the spindle, this nut doesn't even fit down within the pocket. Plus, it's going to be recessed down there. I wouldn't even be able to get to be able to turn it. So I guess we're going to stick with the black arms and just put new blades on. So I guess that makes the decision a little bit easier. All right, we're is. not having too much luck in the garage tonight. So here's the black blades from Classic Alpha. And uh, we've just gone to fit those on the arms. And they do not work because they don't work with the style of clip that is on the original. Now, the chrome blades fit. That's the right style. And that works on this blade. But I'm not sure that we like the uh, chrome blades with the black arms. So... I really like the style of these. They're pretty cool with these little uh, sort of spindly pieces of wire along the top. I don't, I quite like how they're not solid, but again, chrome and black. I don't know if that's a look. Anyway, regardless, the uh, black blades will not work on the black arms, so I think we'll just leave this on here temporarily until we come up with a solution. Maybe Doc will like this. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, those are problematic. All right, guys, Wednesday night just coming up to 7 p.m. and uh, back on the Alfa Romeo. And picking up where we left off with the uh, windscreen wipers, just a quick note. Uh, I did take a few pictures and sent them along to Doc yesterday and told him the issues I was having with the wipers. And Doc has decided that we're going to go back with the black wiper blades versus the chrome. So we're going to order the proper blades uh, in black to go on this car. There's two types of arms. There's a straight arm, which this car has, and uh, what they call a curved arm, which some of the other cars have. So we need the straight arm blades versus the curved arm blades. So we'll get those on order and we'll replace those when they come in. In the meantime, we've got another little project to work out. All right, let's have a quick look at the next project on this car. And as you can probably see, and as some of you have probably noticed in the previous videos, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. We've got a broken radiator shroud, and that's one of the very few things, and I can't really think of anything off, else off the top of my head that's broken on this car, but the uh, rad shroud is definitely broken on this car and needs to be replaced. You could probably live with it if you wanted to, but uh, the, with the type of person that Doc and I are, we need to fix things uh, that are broken to make them look better and be more functional. So that's what we're going to do in this case. So Doc has provided me with a new uh, radiator shroud. And as you can probably see there in the middle, we've got a new radiator hose. Some of you have pointed out that that uh, hose does not fit well. And that was done by the previous owner. They've just got a, I guess, an off the shelf uh, type replacement there. And again, we'll fit the proper hose on there. Now this doesn't look like it's gonna be a extremely easy project. Uh, it looks like the radiator has to come out in order to uh, change the shroud out. So I'm not sure how difficult it will be to get the radiator out. I'm hoping it's just these two bolts here. There's one here and one on the other side. I'm hoping it's just those two bolts that I can see 
that need to be removed for me to be able to lift the radiator out. Of course, in order to do that, I'm going to need to drain the coolant once again. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've drained the coolant on this car, but we'll drain the coolant once again and we'll undo the top radiator hose and the bottom radiator hose at the very least to see if we can get that radiator to move. So I think what we'll do right now is uh, we'll get under the car and we'll drain that coolant as the first step of this project before we continue on. All right, here's where we're at, guys. We've got the uh, rad shroud undone. So there's uh, basically two studs per side. So that's undone. You can see the break a little bit more clearly there. So I think what's going to have to happen here is the rad shroud is going to have to just sort of stay towards the back or the front of the engine here. And then we'll undo these here. We've already got the top and the bottom rad hoses undone. We've also got the overflow pipe undone. So I think we've pretty much disconnected what we can from the radiator. It's drained, of course. So I think we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll undo these two fasteners that we can get to. And we'll see if we can pull that radiator straight up. That will be nice if that actually comes out like that. And there's no more other fasteners keeping that in there. So let's give that a shot. Let's get uh, 13 mil, get those out of there and we'll give that a shot. All right, it looks like those are the only two bolts holding the radiator in. I've just got it tipped forward a little bit. This little uh, seal here on the rear was kind of stuck to the back of the radiator. Uh, that just kind of slides off there, as you can probably see. Maybe we'll just take that off temporarily. And that just slides basically on a rail at the back there. Just sort of like that, like that. All right, so I'm going to try to remove the radiator. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you this, but uh, trust me, you probably don't want to see me get wet anyway. Uh, so we're just going to try to lift that straight up. Hopefully, I've got enough clearance with the... I'll probably have to lift it up a little bit and then sort of tilt it back a little bit um, just to get the clearance with the uh, hood. And uh, we'll see how things go. Wish me luck. All right, radiator's out. And uh, that'll give me a chance to get rid of some of this debris on the front side of the radiator. And this is the original rad, I believe. It's probably never been out of the car. So uh, we'll give be a good opportunity to give that a good cleaning and maybe some painting. Anyway, there it is. There's the big wide open space. So now we can get this shield off of here somehow. Just finagle this out of here like so. And uh, hopefully we'll compare it to the new one and the new one's gonna be an exact fit. But uh, you never know with these cars. So there it is out. And uh, let's get the new one put in. All right, guys. We're just having a quick look at the new radiator shroud. And it fits on the four studs, which is a good start. It does look a little deeper than the stock shroud. But I don't think that's going to be an issue. I don't think there's going to be any interference as far as that's concerned. And it actually may cool even a little bit better, being a little bit deeper shroud to sort of cover that fan a little bit more. So that's probably good. The only thing I'm going to suggest, and I'm going to send Doc a separate email on the side, is since this is the original radiator for the car, it might be a good idea to have this cleaned and uh, pressure tested. I did that with the original radiator from my TR250. It's good, uh, good peace of mind and good insurance if you're planning on going with the original radiator back in the car. And I'll also give it a quick uh, coat of paint before it goes back in as well. So. We'll uh, do a follow-up with Doc and check on that. If that's going to happen, that'll probably be a couple day return. Uh, the, shop, the shop is uh, local to me that does the uh, radiators. So same place where I took the uh, gas tank for the Alpha. I'm quite happy with the job that they did on the gas tank and on the radiator and the TR250. So we'll ask Doc if he wants to go ahead and do that before we go ahead and put it back in the car. All right, guys, Saturday afternoon out in the garage, just sort of tinkering around, doing uh, just some cleaning and organizing and uh, getting ready for a little bit of a road trip to the Rusty Beauties garage tomorrow. We're going to go and visit Alin, and he's going to give us a hand doing the seats tomorrow. So I've got the seat upholstery kits in, I've got the seat foams in, and I believe I have everything else required plus some to get the seats reupholstered tomorrow. So that's assuming that we have enough time to do both seats tomorrow. Uh, of course the first seat's going to be a little bit of a uh, a learning curve. I've not done an Alfa Romeo seat before. I've done a little bit of research and I've done some previous seats but no Alfa seats. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow. I'm hoping it'll go well and with Alin's help uh, I'm sure it will be fine. Other than that we're just sort of cleaning and organizing out here. We left off at the uh, radiator removal the other day and uh, we've decided that we're going to go 
and get a new radiator. So that's on order and being delivered. Um, it was basically a difference of about, I'm going to say $50 American. It was going to be about 200 bucks to have the uh, original rad cleaned and um, pressure tested and painted. The new rad was about 250 American, so we figured we'd spring for a new rad. That one's 40 years old, showing a little bit of uh, a little bit of wear. Some of the fins are dented. It's got a little bit of surface rust to it, so we figured we'd go new, since the price looked uh, pretty appealing. So that's on the way. So we're waiting for that to come before we can get the radiator back in the car and the new shield that we got for that. So that's on hold. That project uh, seats are being done as mentioned tomorrow. We're still waiting on the carpet that's been ordered. I think we're on week number maybe one and a half of eight weeks waiting for that to be made and shipped to us. So that will be still a little ways away. So just sort of biding our time, cleaning and organizing. Uh, used parts bin over here going for uh, Doc. These are all the uh, used parts that came off the car. I like to save the used parts just for reference. Uh, I also save the old parts boxes just for the parts numbers. So the blue bin is filled with old parts that came off the car. Some are usable. For example, the ignition coil that we replaced with the blue Bosch coil. I'm sure that coil is fine. It was just the existing coil for the car. So all of the original parts I'm keeping in the, in the uh, bin there for Doc as well, just so we can pass them on to a potential future owner if he wants to revert back for some reason. There's a few new parts there that I'm going to put back inside in the uh, dining room, living room area um, that were not used on the car. They didn't uh, fit in this case. So I'm just looking at the, uh, the windshield wipers. We do have new black blades on order. So those are coming as well. Hopefully Doc will be able to sell those off to another Alpha owner who's got the uh, correct car for the part. Alright, just after 8.15pm uh, on Saturday night, and we just did a little project out here. Ended up doing some magnetic feet for the third brake light. So just some rare earth magnets in place of the suction cups. So we actually got the option of going with suction cups. So I've managed to find a few more legs. So. There's the suction cup bases that can be exchanged out. So what we've done is we've just used some rare earth magnets and some 3M little uh, glue adhesive on the back of the magnets and we put them on the feet and now we have a magnetic third brake light that's easily removable. And uh, I actually had two sizes of the rare earth magnets, a little thicker one and a thinner one. Started out with a thinner and it uh, wanted to walk a little bit. So we went with the thicker ones and we're pretty nice and solid there, although we can still easily lift it if we want to, but it's got a pretty good little catch to it. So uh, that's good to go. I think the only thing we're going to do is put a little bit of a uh, nylon um, base on the bottom of the magnet so it doesn't actually scratch the paint. So we'll lose a little bit of the uh, magnetivity, but uh, better than that than scratching the paint. So that's what we'll do next for that little project. Alright guys, welcome back to the garage. Tush coming at you. It's been a couple of weeks since I've uploaded a video, so uh, we're ready to get back out here and add it. Starting to get uh, a little busy at work these days, post, uh, let's say post-pandemic, hopefully post-pandemic. It's starting to sort of pick up a little bit for me in the hospitality industry, as you can imagine. So anyway, uh, we'll put our time to good use out here and we will pick up where we left off and I believe the last video I shot was the removal of the radiator and uh, we had decided that we were going to go with a new radiator versus getting this one uh, cleaned, uh, repaired and painted. So the big box in front of me here is the new radiator from Vic Autosports. I haven't unpacked it yet, hopefully it's good. So we're going to be installing that in the car today. The little box on top is from Centerline Alpha and if you recall we had a little bit of an issue the last time we tried to fit the windscreen wipers and we had the wrong style. So that has new windscreen wipers in it so we'll fit those today as well. So as Alin would say let's get crack a lacking and let's install these parts. Alright I think the first thing I'm going to do though before I start unpacking parts is just cleaning this area up a little bit the best I can before we get ready to drop the new radiator in. And one of the things I'd want to do, uh, if this was my car and I was keeping it, I'd definitely want to paint what I could paint while I was there. So I'm going to do the same for Doc, the new owner of this car. You can see that uh, fan pulley is a little bit rusty, or a little bit rusted looking. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sand that up a little bit and just give it a new fresh coat of black paint while we can. So I've got my little paintbrush ready. And we'll uh, turn the motor over a few times in order to get that painted all the way around. 
while we're there, we'll uh, clean up the uh, plastic fan blade as well, get some of the grease marks off of that. I think I had cleaned it once already, but we were uh, playing around with uh, rotating the engine by hand, I think when we were doing the distributor, so we got some greasy uh, fingerprints on the fan, so we'll get those off as best as we can as well. So let me get that painted, and uh, we'll come back with the unboxing of the new radiator. All right, that looks a little bit better. Uh, now freshly painted, and the fan's cleaned up a little bit. So we're going to work on now cleaning up the little rubber seals. So this is the seal that goes beside the radiator, and this is the seal that goes on top of the radiator. So that seal would go up here and ride on this area here, and here is the other seals that go along the sides. So we've got a little bit of uh, rubber care spray here. We're just going to spray these down and clean them up. This is apparently holistic, so that's good. That's a good thing. Anyway, we'll clean those up and uh, we'll reinstall those, then we'll unpack the radiator. All right, guys, we have the new radiator unpacked from Vic Auto Sports, and there is a comparison of the old versus the new, and they look pretty identical with the exception of the new rad has a, an extra port down here at the bottom. Um, and you can actually put a temperature sensor in there if you wanted to run an electric fan, for example. You can you, you put your uh, sensor in there, so it's nice that it's got a bung there, and it's nice that they give you a nice brass plug to plug it if you don't want to actually use it. It also has a brand new plug in the bottom uh, for the drain plug, so that's good. You don't need to transfer those. And it did come with a radiator cap, although I think we're probably going to use the stock cap. Uh, either that or get a sticker for this one, so we'll see. But it's good to have options. So. Outlets, inlets uh, look perfectly uh, in sync with each other, so that's a good thing. Uh, the only thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move the rubber bushings from this old radiator off of this radiator onto the new one, because obviously it didn't come with the uh, new bushings. But the um, fan shroud mounts are there as well, which is a good thing, so this should be a direct drop-in for the stock radiator. So that's what it looks like. Let's put it in. All right, here are the little bushings I'm talking about removing from the old radiator. So it's just a little steel washer here on top. Hopefully you can see that. Nice and brand new on the bottom. So we'll switch sides. And then you just got a little rubber bush here to pull out. I don't know if I can do this one-handed or not. Probably not. I probably need my screwdriver that I have standing by. Oh, here we go. So that just pulls out. And that just pulls out. Again, if yours are in not so good a shape, you may want to get new ones, but these are in great shape. So we'll go ahead and re reuse these on the new radiator. So that's how that pulls out. All right, guys, one other thing you might want to consider purchasing when you're buying a new radiator is a new rubber buffer or isolator for the bottom of the radiator. You can see where it used to sit here. You can see just a little bit of a glue mark, and that would actually fit there on the bottom of the radiator. That coincides with a little plate there at the bottom where I've just sort of cleaned up a little bit. You can see that metal plate. That's where that rubber buffer sits. You can see the opening beside it for the uh, drain hole for the coolant. So rubber buffer sits there in the center. So that's going to go onto the new radiator as well. But one other quick note, uh, the plugs are not tight in the new radiator. So make sure you tighten them before you put the new radiator in. Just to make it a little easier on yourself. I'm, I know you can do it after it's in, but while it's on the floor, you may as well do it. So I just uh, tighten both plugs. So those are nice and secure. So I think we're ready to go now and uh, install this. All right, we've got the new uh, plastic radiator shroud in place. And remember, the reason why we pulled the radiator out in the first place was to get this shroud out. So it's got to go in place or back behind the fan before the radiator gets dropped in. So if you drop the radiator in first, you're not going to be able to get this in. So make sure you get this in first. Hopefully that makes sense. So, okay, ready to drop the rod in. Let's go. All right, guys, the new uh, radiator is in place and bolted up. We still have to do the hoses, but we have the new shroud on. That looks good. It's nice that it's not broken. Probably could fit a little bit closer to the rad at the top here, but not too bad. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. That looks good. Looks a little cleaner in there. I did put the old cap back on, but uh, we have the option of the secondary cap if need be. I'll just put it in the parts bin for Doc if he wants to get a new sticker for this one. It works as well. So um, anyway, so I think we'll go ahead and we'll put the hoses on. We've got no ho new hoses for top and bottom. We'd already put a new hose on the bottom, a new brand new silicone hose. We've got a new hose here for the top. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that now with new clamps. Well, sometimes you just can't win, it seems, with these aftermarket parts. So I've just buttoned everything up. I've put the coolant back in. I've tightened the rad hoses up, etc., etc. 
finally got everything buttoned up and go to start the car and get this horrendous sound and if you can see there the new shroud is actually hitting the bottom of the pulley of the crank pulley and actually the fan itself is slightly fouling on the inside of the new shroud so yeah that means basically I now need to take this completely apart again take the radiator out take the rad shroud out do a little bit of clearancing work with the angle grinder to clearance that pulley and uh, probably have to elongate the mounting holes for the shroud a little bit to drop it down about an eighth of an inch so it clears the bottom of the fan blades as well so I am not a happy camper at the moment that is an absolute waste of time and now I have to drain the rad coolant for about the fourth or fifth time and it's getting old really quickly and before I hear any of you say that I've installed it upside down or incorrectly there's really only one way it can install because there's actually a clearance I'm going to say a clearance molding in the plastic to allow for the clearance of the radiator hose down there so it's a little bit of an angular cut to allow for the hose so there's no other way that it can be installed than this way here and I know that the radiator is in the exact position it was Yes, it is a new radiator, but it's actually bolted up to the exact locations that the old one did. So I know the radiator is in the correct place as well. So, unless the mounting tabs are slightly off for the actual shroud itself, I don't think they are. But uh, I've taken a look at the old shroud that came off, and it's thinner on the bottom. And it is also sort of cut a little bit on the inside you can see here on this flange so he looks a little different on the bottom so it's probably been cut that much to clearance the pulley and you can see it's got a little bit of a rounded edge in there so the new shroud does not have that so that is probably my problem with the new shroud so again that means undoing everything that I've done it wouldn't be so bad if I just had to undo all the hoses and pull the rat out but I've also got to uh, drain the coolant which is a pain in the butt so I've got to find another clean container to trap the or catch the clean coolant I just put in again anyway sounds like I'm whining and I am but uh, it upsets me when I have to go to the trouble of doing redoing everything that I've just done and I actually struggled to get that in there with the shroud in place it's a little bit of a puzzle getting that in there as you can imagine so I'll we'll have to go through that process again and I'm not looking forward to it now as far as the fan fouling it is only fa fouling in one spot as it spins and I'm not sure whether you can see that's where my light is shining with the flashlight you can see a little bit of a mark there in the bottom of the shroud where it's hitting so in order to fix that I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to have to slot the um, areas here on the sides and drop that down a tiny little bit in order to clearance that so we'll have to do a little bit of work on these mounting areas as well on both sides in order to drop that down for clearance so we'll do that once the rat is out and that shroud is off again I'm sure I'm gonna be in touch with uh, where did I get this shroud from I'm not sure if this came from centerline I think it was centerline alpha but I'm gonna be giving them a call to be sure all right got the rad shield out and the radiator back out and you can probably see here where the pulley is hitting so basically I need to clearance from here to here in order to get enough clearance for that pulley scratched it a little bit getting it back out but not too bad at least it's not broken again and that's always the fear about taking stuff in and out you're gonna damage a brand new piece anyway we'll uh, clearance this and uh, see if that helps a little bit we also have a little bit of that clearance issue on the bottom here as you can see so we'll probably end up having to slot these a little tiny bit just to get a bit more flank fan clearance on the bottom as well it may actually fix itself once we clearance this we might be able to uh, get a little bit more drop on the bottom with this shroud anyway so 
We'll do this clearance first and then we'll do a quick check. All right guys, it's coming up to 8 p.m. and I'm uh, pretty frustrated out here tonight. So we're gonna call it a day. Uh, I did put the rad back in, put the shroud back on, and uh, didn't put any coolant in at least this time. I decided to uh, try it before I did that. And although I have clearance now on the pulley for the crankshaft, uh, the fan is still hitting the shroud. So I need to make some further modifications to fix that. So that is not going to be today. I'm going to walk away for now. And we'll come back out here another day. But uh, yeah, <laughs> sometimes you have those days in the garage and this is one of them. All right, we'll see you tomorrow or the next day. All right, 8.15 a.m. Saturday morning now and uh, back out in the garage arm with a bit more patience. And we're gonna pull the rad out for a third time in order to fix that clearance issue for the last time, hopefully. So we're gonna do a little bit more work on the radiator shroud and uh, try to drop that down a little bit more. I still have a little bit of room to uh, play with the mounting locations here and make some more clearance there. So we're gonna do that before we get drastic. I uh, don't want to have to trim any more out of the bottom of the uh, shroud, but we'll do as required. So we're going to work on plan A first and see if we uh, can get enough clearance that way. I think what I'm going to do when I pull it out this time, when I pull the rad out this time, is just for fun, I'm going to measure it versus the uh, other rad. Uh, just, just some, you know, uh, stud uh, measurements and overall measurements of the radiator. I'm going to do a few measurements on this shroud as well because I'm sure people are going to ask me why did it not fit. And uh, I'd rather have some more definitive answers for you than it just it didn't fit. So uh, let's get to business. At least I didn't put coolant in it as mentioned. Um, I did hook up the radiator hoses. I'm getting good at that. So we'll undo those hoses uh, top and bottom and uh, we'll pull the rod out again. Okay, here's a little bit better visual of the issue that I'm having with this new radiator shield. So you can see that we've got the uh, tab locations lined up here on the side. It's lined up on the top. So here's the bottom and I've got the old shroud overlaid over the new shroud. And again, you can see it's even at the top here. But take a look at the difference in the bottom of the shroud, how much lower this dips versus the new shroud so there is the problem so that's the clearance basically that I need to make for the fan so I think I'm gonna have to do some significant trimming to be able to clear those fan blades so uh, again I'm gonna have to get the Dremel out and uh, go to town uh, and make some modifications to make this new cover work so there's a, a better description of what I'm dealing with Hopefully this will be the last time I have to put this in. So not only did I have that issue with the fan hitting, I mentioned I had the issue with the pulley hitting. So you can see the clearance I made here on the back by cutting this section out. Now we've got to make some clearance for the actual blades where you can see are actually hitting there. So back to the Dremel. I think we're going to, what I end up going to do now is we're going to make a wider clearance and come back down into this area here to give the fan blade some clearance all the way back to here. I'm a little concerned if I go too thin, obviously back here, that we're gonna crack this, but uh, there's really no option as far as clearance is concerned. Um, I've gotta make it basically that depth. So we've gotta do that. So we'll break up the Dremel blade and we'll do some more cutting. All right, the Dremel's done its job and we've made the necessary modifications, so Again, getting a little bit thin on the bottom, but uh, still got good structure to it. So just have to be a little bit more careful when we put that back in. So hopefully that will give us enough clearance now on the bottom of the fan. And uh, it sort of more accurately matches what that kind of looks like from the factory. So uh, let's go ahead and reinstall it for the third time. All right, guys, I guess uh, four times a charm. Actually ended up taking it back out again to do a little final trimming and all is good now. We're just going to bring it up to temperature, make sure we have no leaks. But it's looking good. Car is sounding good. Maybe the car sounds better every time, I every time I start it. So there's the new uh, rag hose on the top here. 
As mentioned, I already have the new rad hose on the bottom. So it's looking good. And anyway, we'll bring it up to temperature. We'll shut it off and check for leaks. All right, guys, now that the radiator is in, I want to move on to some smaller jobs. I want to get the windscreen wiper blades put back on, and we've got the new ones here from Centerline Alpha. There's the part number there. Hopefully those will go on without any issues. One of the other jobs I wanted to do was to disconnect the buzzer for the uh, door, or the key buzzer. And the other, one of the other things I wanted to do was to actually put the trunk carpeting back in. So it's just sitting here on the back of the TR250. So I have a new fastener kit for that, so maybe we'll clean the trunk one more time. We'll uh, stow the jack uh, a little bit better. I've got some new straps for that, so we'll apply those to get that tucked away. And uh, we'll get the carpet back in and squared away. Okay, it looks like these blades are going to work out okay. There's a little uh, stock piece that you need to remove, first of all. So this little piece here in the center, we're going to replace with this piece, which allows us to use it with the uh, stock wipers on the Alfa Romeo. So all we're going to do is pop this out, it's just a push-in fit. And then the other one slots in here in this middle. And then we'll uh, pop it on the uh, passenger side. I'm sorry, did you say something? I can't hear you over the buzzer. Anyway, windscreen wipers are now installed. They look good. They fit well. Happy, happy. Let's go after this buzzer. To figure out where the heck it is located in this car. I think it is... I don't know. Driver's side, maybe? Anyway, we'll track it down. And we'll figure out the best way to uninstall it unplug it and we'll do something get rid of that racket all right here is the annoying buzzer so it's the bottom switch so all we're going to do is disconnect the switch and uh, put a little bit of shrink tubing over the wiring so it doesn't short anywhere and we'll put the switch back in so if anybody ever wants to reinstall this in the future all they need to do is fish out the uh, connector plug it back in and you've got your buzzer back so that's an easy fix. Let me go to uh, shrink tubing that connection. All right, so onto the trunk. And uh, Doc has sent me a couple of nice uh, leather straps here. And the intent with those is to replace the, if you look back in here on the original jack and tool kit, there's these little uh, rubber bands here. You can see one there and one there. And obviously over the last 40 years, those have perished. So we're gonna use those leather straps in their place and uh, we'll get that secured a little bit better. That just keeps this handle from swinging down on the jack handle and uh, keeps this in place as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll replace those with the leather straps before we put the carpeting back in. Actually, I'm mistaken. They're not leather. They're actually uh, nylon or vinyl. I've just put the first one in and recognized that it wasn't leather. So those are quite nice. I don't know if you noticed I have an original style here, but I have no idea how this was utilized and where it hooks to. So we're just gonna go with these style straps. And as you saw, it looks like the uh, were originally held with those white rubber bands anyway. So these will more than suffice in that application. All right, I just wanted to verify that that uh, trunk light works and it actually works with the, uh, the actual running lights on. So just so you know, Doc, if you need to lighten the trunk, the lights need to be on for that to work. I've stowed that away back there as you know, I think it probably would look something like that from the factory. I'm not sure about the actual um, lug nut wrench, but it seems to work okay like that. So we'll leave it like that. The uh, stock tool kit's back under there. So let's get the carpet back in. All right, here are the original trunk uh, carpet trim screws. And they're a little bit rusty and looking a little worse for wear. So we've got new trim screws standing by. So we'll go ahead and we'll install those carpets back in the car. We'll give them a good vacuum, a good clean out. And that should be good to go. All right, guys, not sure how well you're gonna be able to see this back here, but uh, carpet is installed and looking good. So it's all screwed in. And we've got the battery cover in place. So that looks good. So I'm happy with that. The carpet's in pretty good shape back here. We'll probably give it one more quick detail before we pass it off to dock. But other than that, it's looking good. Fits as it should. And uh, that's good. One more project crossed off the list. All right, I think we'll do one more last job before we call it a day out here in the garage. On the left-hand side, we've got a new bulb for the under hood bulb. 
So we've just removed the old one here and uh, we're going to replace it with a brand new one and then we'll call it a day out here in the garage finishing with an easy job. Alright, always end on an easy job. The new bulb is in and tested and working. Just disconnected the battery so we're good to go there. So unfortunately I won't be getting to the seats as promised today. That uh, radiator install in my mind was going to take between an hour and an hour and a half and ended up, ended up taking about six hours. So I don't think we're going to be able to get to the seats unfortunately as planned but they can wait for another day. Again we're still waiting for the carpet. I think we're into either week two or three waiting for that of a six day week wait so we've still got a little bit of time to wait for the carpet so we have time to do the seats. So anyway, we're going to take the rest of the day off and uh, just relax a little bit and uh, do some in-house stuff like cleaning and laundry, stuff that I love to do. Anyway, uh, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you out here on the next video.